subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Ants are really industrious workers and they do a large chunk of their engineering work away from prying human eyes. We can't really see with our eyes how they plan the architecture of the complex structures that they build. Ant colonies of many different species of ants build complex nests using soil which are of course earth protected and temperature controlled. Ants work in an extremely well coordinated manner and are highly highly efficient. In this video, we're going to discuss new findings that were made using 3D x-ray imaging and CT scanners. And these images reveal how ants understand the impressive physics that they use to build their structures. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Ants are commonly described as eusocial animals, which means that they have the most systematic levels of social structural organization. This is not like human society. Instead, it is characterized by division of labor. There are soldier ants who perform specialized tasks, workers who are responsible for food and hygiene and the nest, and of course the queen who is the only one who will reproduce. In animal societies, these groups within the same species that are divided on basis of labor are unfortunately referred to as castes, and each animal doing one form of work loses at least partially the ability to perform the work done by another caste or group. Ants, bees, wasps, all are eusocial animals and they all belong to the order Hymnoptera. Division of reproductive labor is what primarily characterizes eusocial animals. Among mammals, many do exhibit eusocial tendencies but are not fully described as being eusocial. Many animals that live in groups, like meerkats, show eusocial behaviors where the breeding pair receives first preference for food and is protected from the outside environment and from predators by other members of the group. Some species of mole rats have reproductive queens with divided reproductive labor too. Humans are thought to have some eusocial tendencies but are not fully described as being eusocial as reproductive labor is not divided among groups of individuals. With ants and their eusociality, the advantage is the efficiency with which they carry out tasks including nest building. There are complex processes involved in this like routing, swarm intelligence and other forms of optimization which has also been an inspiration for multiple machine learning and operations research processes. Myrmecologists or entomologists who study ants have made numerous discoveries about the structure of ant colonies and nests and how they are built using structures called formicaria or ant farms where ant activity can be observed through a glass container. When ants build tunnels, they dig through the soil and they move grains of soil around. When a grain is removed during the process of digging, the stability of the site at which it was removed gets changed. But ants seem to be exceptionally good at excavating, constantly removing grains of soil and building tunnels which continue to remain stable and do not collapse. We don't know how ants make these judgment calls while digging about the processes of granular excavation or the removal of smaller particles from a structure that is made up of the same particles. How do they judge the stability of the structure? One of the authors of this new study, Jose Andrade, a mechanical engineer at Caltech, was apparently inspired to understand anthill structures because of the attractive but gruesome concept by anthill art. The person behind anthill art pours molten aluminium inside ant colonies and ant hills. Some are abandoned, some are not, and once the aluminium cools down and is solidified, the mound of soil around it is destroyed and the intricate aluminium structure is then sold as a showpiece. So Andrade saw an image of one of these and he was curious to know if ants actually build such complex intricate tunnels and how they do it. He teamed up with Caltech bioengineer Joe Parker who was studying ants and got to figuring out how they worked on the problem of 
tunneling. Their question was, were the ants playing Jenga? Did they figure out how to move grains of soil and which grains of soil to move by checking around the way we do when we play Jenga? A lot of the times when we play the game, we experience something called a structure's force chain, which is a set of pieces that are sort of wedged together because of all the various forces acting on them from all different directions. And these force chains tend to hold up the structure. They are essential to hold up a structure. So the researchers hypothesized that maybe ants could figure out where these force chains are in the soil and then they don't dig around in that area so that they can keep tunnels stable. Understanding processes like this is what the researchers were hoping to do in their study. So for the study, the team first set up miniature ant farms having about 500 milliliters of soil and western harvester ants, 15 individuals. Then, every single ant and every grain of soil in the container was imaged using high-resolution CT scanning techniques. CT scanning is X-ray scanning and this went on for 20 hours. The equipment took an image every 10 minutes and the time-lapse of this data gave the researchers exact details about which specific grains of sand were being moved, where to build what. There was a lot of hit and miss for about a year and a year later, the researchers had some solid data to work with. Now, having been able to track which grains were moved in this setup, the researchers wanted to figure out why ants chose the grains that they did to construct their tunnel and how those grains were removed. So a computer model was created using these X-ray scans and every single grain of soil was recreated within the model. With this, the researchers hoped to figure out all the physical forces that were acting on each of the grains in the tunnel so that they could understand the physics of moving each one of them. Some parameters they considered were gravity, cohesion because of soil moisture and so on. From the visual data and the simulation, the researchers noted a few things. First, ants are really efficient. They want to minimize energy and maximize output, and they want to dig straight down. First, they dug along the walls of the cups, using the cup itself as a part of the tunnel structure, so it was less work for them, and the wall of the tunnel was solid. Then the researchers noticed that the ants always tend to dig as straight as possible, taking the shortest path between two points. They also dug very steep up to what is called the angle of repose of the soil material. All granular material, material that is made up of small grains, have their own angle of repose. Basically, this angle represents the steepest slope or angle that a granular material can be piled up at before it collapses. For example, if we're piling sand constantly, every time we add some more sand on top, a large portion of it slides down the slopes along the sides. And as a result, as the height of the structure increases, its width also increases. But the angles never get steeper. The angles of the slope of the sand mound always remain the same. On the other hand, if the sand is wet, it can be clumped together to form even vertical slabs at 90 degree angles. This is because wet sand has a higher angle of repose than dry sand. Ants seem to be able to understand this concept and understand the angle of repose of the material that they're working with, or at least sense this, and when they dig, they dig all the way up to the angle of repose, but they never exceed it. This is when they're digging straight down around like roots spreading out. So their structure never collapses. There is structural integrity because the slopes never exceed the angle of repose. Then the most significant finding that the researchers made was related to force chains or groups of grains that are clumped together because of other forces acting on them in all directions. When the ants started to dig, Random force chains formed around before digging and in the early versions of the tunnel, as expected. However, as they continue to make progress on the tunnel, the force chains start to rearrange towards the outer edge of the tunnel, almost like a cocoon that is holding the tunnel in safely and protecting it. 
So the ants are able to move grains around in such a way that they move force chains around to the periphery of their structure to strengthen their walls. The force chains also relieve pressure from the grains of sand at the points at which ants are digging at the end of their tunnel, so it is safer for them to remove a grain as well without danger. This of course begs the question, do ants know what they're doing? Do they know that they're rearranging force chains? Can they sense them? Is their intention to move these concentration of physical forces around to strengthen their nest? The team says, no, not really. The ants don't exactly know what they're doing. They only know that they have to dig a certain way and through evolution, the physics of how they are supposed to dig has been codified into their DNA. The authors describe this process as a behavioral algorithm, saying that the algorithm doesn't exist with any single individual of an ant colony, but it is visible only when the colony functions together. The colony behavior makes all the workers akin to functioning like a super organism, but each individual ant doesn't know what the larger picture is. The findings from this preliminary study are promising first steps in the field of robotics, especially for mining. The study was also funded by a grant from the US Army Research Office. Most interestingly, these findings promise to hold clues for our understanding into, of course, optimization processes and operations, but also architecture and newer forms of construction.